What's up guys? So today let's talk about my belt, right? Update to my belt setup. It has changed a bit and, uh, and I just like going through it and maybe give you some ideas and also uh, really kind of showcase some of the things that I use all the time to kind of teach or for, for some of you guys that are taking classes and stuff and going out to learn maybe some ideas that can come from there. But this is the belt I used to teach in and also to uh, pretty much learn in, right? So going through it, the base belt of this setup uh, has changed, right? So uh, a new current favorite, which there's always a new one because everybody's coming out with more innovative stuff, which is really cool. And I, I really enjoy seeing new things and really trying them. So on this occasion, we're using, or now, the new favorite is the new Blue Alpha belt. Now, the new Blue Alpha outer belt is actually pretty amazing. And what they did was a little bit more innovation than I've seen with some things and not going over overboard with innovation to the point that it doesn't work anymore, but to the point of like really making their belts better, right? So if you've seen the Blue Alpha belts before, either on here or on other people's uh, YouTube videos, then you could, you could probably get an understanding if you've never seen one in person, but if you see them in person, they're well built, stiff, and they, they give you everything you need, but there's always been a couple downsides to them, so they kind of went ahead and addressed those and then kind of fixed them. So we'll talk about Blue Alpha Belt uh, a little bit, but I've only had it for a month, so I want to have it for a longer period of time before I give like my final like, yeah, you know, or whatever. So. Going through it with this belt uh, as my base, they sent me the pre-production one that has a plastic buckle. I was a little iffy on that, but it's actually been awesome having some weight savings because I don't need a metal buckle and uh, it still has a lot of strength to it and still doesn't like it doesn't break under a, a pound of pressure. So you're good. Um, it has an actual very high rating. I believe it's around 500 pounds. Now, the other thing that you may notice is that there's no tail end to this belt, right? So I'll get some close-ups here. Um, the tail end of the belt has been deleted or really just re-engineered. So it's been moved to going through the buckle and inward to the body where it now has hard side Velcro or hook Velcro to hook to you or your inner belt now. Really, really smart idea because now you don't have this dingle dangle uh, end hanging out there to do whatever or get loose or loosen up your belt. Now it's actually contained and pinched between the, your belt and your body, which is kind of cool. So now the sizing can be done by unvelcroing and moving it around. And then the same with the other side, they put in a secondary sizing area. Now, the other thing this is really cool for is now both these sides can be opened up and you can change the buckles out whenever you feel like it. So it's uh, it's become a little bit more modular in that sense. Now, another thing they did was they went ahead and laser cut their Molly, which was really cool. It's very uniform and it has a stiffener in here. Um, I can't remember what it's made out of, but I'm sure it's a Tegris of some sort and thickness, uh, but it gives you enough thickness or rigidity. So obviously you can hold everything and it doesn't just flop under any kind of weight. So really cool belt. I'm really looking forward to using it for this year and seeing like how it shakes out. Now, going further, right, we'll start on the holster side here. Um, as you guys have probably seen, this is a Velocity Systems little like, little tiny GP pouch that they use or they have. Um, in this GP pouch, I usually keep a little lanyard with some kind of uh, carabiner on here to, to hook some adjustment tools, the Nanos from Multitasker. These are actually pretty amazing. As a teacher, you should probably have these uh, readily available when uh, adjusting people's scopes, optics, or, or anything that you have to do. Uh, they have a lot of little mini tools on here that adjust most things, um, including a lot of lasers, if not all the lasers. So maybe something to look at. It's a very small tool, doesn't take up a lot of space or weight. I usually keep a carabiner to the lid of this and, and what I'll do is I'll just unhook it and walk around with it and go ahead and adjust things or if people need help with adjustment or need it, I can hand it off and things like that. Um, one thing I will be adding to it is more of a high-vis color of 550 cords, so probably like this orange over here, like some kind of high-vis orange so it's easier to find when we drop it in the dark because it's happened a couple times and I'm like, oh dang, and then I gotta look with my light and stuff. Um, so something to think about there. So going further, right, I have my good old Gerber, right, multi-tool, like 
everybody should have a multi-tool to an extent. I, I believe the amount of times that I whip this thing out in classes to help people out is pretty extensive. Um, maybe something to think about. Um, in here, I also keep a good old little uh, wipe for my lenses, my glasses, anything that I'm using like that. And then also some foamy ear pro that actually slip into the back of these. If you get the one from Big, Big Text, it'll come with it. Um, foamies aren't like the end all be all, but they do help, especially if I'm doing something that I need some extra plugs or I forget my ear pro and I'm like, oh, I got some extras that I could throw in. I like having foamies on hand because if I lose them, who cares? And if I need them, they're there. Um, also, once again, they don't weigh anything. Now, sometimes I will throw in specific things like a little bottle of lube in here or, or like one of the, the little um, sample packets. The little, sorry, that, that took a second. A little sample packets from like companies that I get from like SHOT Show or like events or whatever. And I'll throw them in there too because those little packets are pretty robust. And then when I need them, I can just use them real quick, maybe pass it around if students need it or other people need it around me and then poof, discard that bad boy. Don't matter. So uh, every once in a while I'll have some of those in here, but right now I do not. So uh, I'll just leave this out. So going further down the line is my holster setup. It has not changed much from previously, right? Uh, I still use the no ride, uh, if you want to call it that, no ride height or high ride height, I, I forget, and I still don't know what it's called from Safari Land, um, with one of their female QRLS, QLS forks. Um, in there, I also are on the their Safari Land holsters right now. I'm still using an uh, RDS version, so 6390 uh, RDS. And on here, uh, I have put a nub mod because I do like them. They're they're thicker. Um, and one of the no camp plates that are sold by Theory Police or uh, sometimes also sold on Centrifuge's website. But I hold my 1110 tourniquet holder on there with a good old Cat 7. Um, just something to be aware of. Cats should not be exposed to a lot of UV. And when they are like this and put in this position, you should have like a training one that you swap out with or one that, that you're like, okay, every, every, let's say quarter, I swap this bad boy out for, for a new one because she gets dirty and damaged. I, I don't want to risk my life to something like this. So something to think about. Now I also have, um, where I've mounted my uh, QLS fork is completely different. It is not in the traditional three holes. It's actually up towards that little thumb block thing. Now, by the way, that thumb blocker, uh, <laughs> they call it like, hey, it blocks the thumb from like somebody trying to grab your gun on the website, but it's actually just to keep fat off of your ALS button, FYI. Now, if you have an ALS style holster, you can actually mount it high like this. Um, I, as long as it's one of the 6,000 series, the 7,000 series, you can't. And then the, uh, the new 8,000 series is going to be a ginormous monster. So we'll see how that works out, but that's how I mount my, my actual, um, holster. So I don't need a, a leg strap. This gives me leverage that when I pull my holster, or pull my gun from my holster, the holster is pulling from the belt, not from below the belt. And that gives me no like leverage to pull on my belt or pull my holster up. This actually allows my holster to sit nicely and not have to use a leg strap, which I dislike using leg straps. So something to think about. Now going further around, we have a Spiritus Spud. Now, if you've never seen one of these, uh, they are probably one of the most useful mag pouch slash general purpose pouches that I've ever seen. Um, it can be, this, this tail can be removed. It could be modified, like it could, uh, the height of it, so you can get longer and taller things in here. Um, the pouch can also be extended based off of some shock cord. It's actually super, super, super useful. So I normally use this thing for a water bottle. Right on the range, I need some water with me and that is how I use it. But if I do other things with, let's say some LE or mill, um, well, guess what? I can throw bangers, smokes, anything I want in this thing. Even some spare mags if I wanna carry more ammo on my belt. Uh, I really, really like it. Uh, sometimes I'll use it for a radio if I'm handed a random radio from an agency to keep track of them and do some certain things with them. So it just depends, but this thing is so general purpose that I can just use it for whatever. And that's the goal, right? Is to have something that I can use for multi-use stuff. So that, that's what I use my, my spud for. 
just a multitude of things. There's, it's really not a one trick pony, which I like. So just something to think about as you start going through, that's where I put it. And if, if it kind of looks like it's close to my holster where my gun goes, you can see there's plenty of clearance here. Um, and especially because the, the belt goes around me. So I never even touch my spud like that. Now going around the back, I keep the rear of mine pretty clean. Uh, sometimes I use a fanny sack from like Spiritus as like a med pack to supplement my medical. Um, sometimes I use a gas mask pouch from like Thief or uh, <clears throat> a Thief essentially, which is their GMP, which is their gas mask pouch that is ginormous, but it carries my gas mask. So if I'm doing things like that, I have plenty of space that I can put the fanny pack strap over my belt and drop the pouch over here and I can spin it around to the front when I need to get in it. So really, really useful. I like to keep my back pretty clear because when I sit in a car, I don't like things poking at me. It's very uncomfortable. So just something maybe think about, but hey, if you don't use your belt or have to drive in cars or sit down with it, rock on girl, you do what you want. So moving further back, oh, it also allows me for other equipment, right? So if for whatever reason I want to add another pouch to this because I need to carry more shit, uh, then I can go ahead and actually add another pouch. So this one being from like 8492 nylon, they make just a, a tall two row Molly kind of pouch. And what I've done is take a Guardian Warrior Solutions adapter and a tech lock with a Lunar Concepts little Velcro piece so that it Velcros to the inside of my belt and then adds Velcro to to help with my inner belt connection, I can slap this bad boy on here, clipper in, and now I've added more utility to my belt. So just something to think about, like there's tons of options out there, but this is one way that I do it. And if you wanna see more on Guardian Warrior Solutions, go ahead and check out the video I did with them, or I'm sorry, of their, their equipment, their adapters, really, really useful. So something to check out. Now going further, what you'll find is uh, my med pouch. This is one that I'm doing with Flatline Fiberco, the same guys that are doing or making my dump pouch and they make my nerds. Um, but the the this is probably the final prototype, so we'll see what the final comes out as, and uh, and it should be pretty cool. If you want to know more about that, just keep keep kind of line of sight on on what we're doing make sure you stay on both our newsletters because we'll be announcing it soon and when it's going to be released and i'll have some videos out on that eventually now going further we have a defense mechanisms rifle pouch um, i usually use some kind of softer pouches because if i sit down on them or if i want to shove something bigger in there i can so my phone fits in here i could also put like as big as like sr25 mags in this pouch really really useful i like having a 762 size or 308 or ar10 size pouch that still retains my ar15 style mags so you just have to pay attention to what you're doing and make sure that you're you're using a pouch that's going to give you enough give and not drop your shit now behind it and on it is my dump pouch this is the mini in cordora it is uh, just another version of my dump pouch setup with, with Flatline Fiber Co that we've designed and it is super useful. And if you haven't seen it before, I usually just keep markers in there by the way when I teach. But if you haven't seen it before, you can roll this bad boy up very easily. All right, and it has its own retention and folds up to being almost nothing on your pouch, doesn't take up any extra space, and just really, really useful. So if you get the regular size one, they fit gas masks. So if you don't have a gas mask pouch, that may be an option for when you need to use one. Or if you're doing stuff on the range and you need it, you could pop it open. If you don't need it and you don't need to put anything in it, close it. Um, dump pouches have been very useful even when I was overseas. I used to use them for like the grenade launcher that I had, right, from uh, the HK320. Uh, I used to go ahead and put that bad boy right in there uh, because some of those clips and some of the other things don't work very well. So I just carry it like that. It was actually pretty cool and it was still lanyarded to me, but it worked. And another thing for dump pouches, at least for me, when hiking, dump pouches are a really easy way to keep like a snacky poo or just anything that I want to use. So things like that. So it doesn't have to be on a range belt, but it could be other useful things. Now going further, we have uh, two pistol mag pouches that are angled. Both of these are from Arbor, uh, Arbor Arms. And um, 
both they make really nice mag pouches they have a little magnet in them they're angled they're still soft they're not hard like kydex like s tax and stuff um i i don't prefer hard kydex if i can stay away from it um for for my belts because i have to lay on shit and i'm not like down with that not that it's that big of a deal but it may be for you but i like these a lot they kind of hang freely almost, which is kind of nice and, and kind of give you a good angled mag pouch if you want that. Uh, I use mostly extended mags, so when I have them uh, on my belt, right, they sit really nice and in a good alignment. If you have shorter mags, these may be a little too tall for you. The other thing I have on here is a Blue Force Gear Marco. So Blue Force Gear makes this little Marco pouch that is for tiny chem lights. And these are super useful to dispense and drop chem lights. But if you don't need that, probably not useful to you. Um, I use them pretty often for classes when I mark uh, shooting lines or something like that for all the nighttime stuff. And just a pro tip, don't leave it out and exposed to the sunlight like this. Uh, go ahead and rotate that bad boy in. I got that from one of the dudes that works at Blue Force Gear, Chris Sizelove. He was like, this is a good idea, man. And I was like, that is a good idea. Love that guy. Um, what I've done also is on the strap that attaches the Marco pouch, which is just uh, a quick release on that strap is also on the back. I went ahead and put a G hook and that G hook holds my gloves right behind it. So really, really trying to use all the space I have and not overdo things and give me a really good use of my real estate because I am a small dude, um, not teeny tiny, but I am smaller and my waist size isn't that big. It's 34 on this belt. So I do have certain things that I can put certain places and just run out of space pretty quick. So just something to think about there um, with how you set up your belts and stuff like that. Now, another reason I like this quick release is because what I'll do when I shoot long range, I can clip my game changer, pint size game changer to my belt and now have a quick release for my game changer to go ahead and prop it, set my rifle down, do my thing. Um, I really like it. I, this has a get light in it, so it's not a sandbag that's hanging off my belt. That would be way too heavy. But this being uh, probably maybe, maybe a pound is actually really amazing, or it's probably not even a pound. It's super, super light. Get light is really useful. Um, so something else to think about, and that's what I use that quick release for when I'm not using Marcos, or when, I mean, if I'm not using either one, then I just leave it blank. Now, um, going all the way back to the front now on the other buckle, uh, like I said, this has the adjustment on it still, so I can adjust this, or once again, I left some space so that I can start adding some angled mag pouches and I'm playing around with a bunch of different ones to kind of play around with them to see if I like those better than standard ones. Um, it is nicer in certain ways and it's kind of hindrance in other ways. So it just depends on what I'm planning on doing, but, but I leave that space clear now so that I can add or subtract it when I need. So hopefully this was educational and gave you some ideas on useful things that you can do uh, with your belt and what I try to do is make my belt useful for everything I do the only thing it really doesn't accomplish is giving me enough pouches or enough space for like USPSA I have to set up a belt separately for that and uh, which makes sense right you play the game you set your equipment up for the game that you're gonna play but I do try to adapt one belt to a lot of different things uh, so when I do use this for just PRS stuff like bolt gun stuff I can delete these mags delete the Marco delete my rifle mag and delete my holster and on this side I could put my rangefinder and on this side I can literally put my AICS mags or my Tika mags in there depending on which gun I'm shooting so just different things to kind of think about but like Make your stuff more modular. It saves you a little bit of money and it also keeps everything relatively the same. So you have now consistency and you build some efficiency with what you're using, um, which makes it a lot easier for you in the long run. So hope this helps guys. And uh, if you have any questions, put them below and I'll try and get to them. Take care.